Roger, when you commented on uh, the Quad Bravo uh, problem and separation, uh, you're a little weak. Could you uh, go through what you did 15 seconds. Uh, after you noticed the talk back to Barbara Pole again, please? What's up, guys, and welcome to Vape Link <laughs> Intro. What's up, guys, and welcome to Vape Link here every Monday night at 9.30 Eastern uh, on vapelink.com. Uh, I've got my buddy Kaz up here. I've got uh, Jesse, Basil Ray, um, and we are, what, episode, what are we, 27, guys, 27, 20, 28? Yeah, it's, it's, it's 28. Yeah, we've done a lot. Yeah, it's definitely 28. Uh, it's been a whole seven days since we uh, had that blow up last week, and, and we've come back together, and, and we hugged it out, and here we are again on a Monday night. What have you guys been doing over the past week? Mr. Basil Ray. Uh, you know, I think I finally completely 100% mastered the amp tank. I have not had a single drop of leakage in the last week. And I had been just cranking through liquid. Uh, just in what I vaped out of the amp tank last week, last week I cracked through over 40 mils of liquid. Uh, pretty close to 70 mils just in this guy. So really been tearing through liquid, which has upped my DIY output quite a bit. Um, we were talking about this before the show started. I got one of these uh, vape-only bottom coil cardamizers, the Ego Style here. Got it set up on the Minxie right before the show. It suddenly started Wait, working right. I was about only. to throw in the trash. Vape only. Yeah. yeah. The Evod, or you got the 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 other one, the uh, the silver. I can't see you. So he. <laughs> oh yeah. No, it is the um, the uh, the vape only style one. Ah uh, yes, I've tried that. Inferior. Yeah. The the, the, the BCC. Evod. BCC branded, but I believe it's the same thing as the vape only, if I'm not mistaken. I could be. I don't know. It's possible. But um, now that I've kind of got it, I think the wick situated better. Seems to be going pretty well. Other than that, vaping the lava gen a bit, and that's been really about it. Nice. Mr. Kaz. Well, it's been kind of a big week for me, uh, in my own way. I, uh, was finally able to locate uh, Smoke Tech Long Barrel 3 Ohm Cardamizers. Yay! And uh, I got I, I went to a vape meet Sunday in Michigan, in Monroe, Michigan, and they have them every two weeks there. Uh, they're held at the Revolver Lounge there. And uh, I really have a good time with the people that are there, and it's nice of the guy who owns the store to uh, let people meet, but of course it's good for his business, right? So don't take that as an endorsement of his product. Um, and I got a hold of some menthol e-juice that I love that I haven't been able to get recently, and I'm vaping the ever-loving bejesus out of it. Now, it's a PG juice, so I'm having to drink like three times the water I normally do to keep my mouth wet, but it's working. And I'm getting all keyed up for vape bash, which I'll have a report it's on. Basil is not going to, right? Yeah, Basil, I don't think he's making it, is he? I'm not. I'm not. I mean, for me, I can't take the time away until I have an agreement to buy a house that's like first and foremost in my personal life so I will not be attending 
Oh, Sorry. That's a bummer, but that's okay. you got a real life. Uh, I, on the other hand, will be attending, and uh, so I will uh, enjoy seeing all of my friends uh, that I haven't seen. I will miss you, Basil. I will miss you, Michael. But uh, uh, there in spirit. Be, there will be other meets, absolutely. And speaking mm -hmm. of vape, mm -hmm. speaking of vape bash, uh, I have a special non-promotional offer because <laughs> only vape link viewers are going to know about this. But I have in my hands a Lava Tube 2.0 and an Evic, and I'm willing to trade them as a pair. Prefer to trade them as a pair for something interesting at Vape Bash. So. Wait a second. I thought that you said that you like I do. the Lava Tube. Too. I what love has it. happened? That was said. No, that it's was not. I, not that I don't. Not that I don't love it, but I have a lot of stuff that works well, and I want to try something I haven't tried before. So this would be another way to get something additional. So if you're interested in these, they will be up for trade while I'm there. I'll take. Uh, I'll take offers, and sometime on Saturday, I'll make a decision. So I want them to go as a pair. So I'm letting people know about that. Um, I had a. A really really bad moment with my Proveri this weekend my Proveri stopped working temporarily uh, I turned my uh, turned my chair uh, at my desk in Michigan and knocked over a big glass of water and mm. knocked over a whole bunch of stuff soaked my keyboard the whole bit and obviously I'm not happy about that right I'm you know you're swearing and everything like that but water got into my Proveri and it started throwing E1 and E7 and E8 errors. Okay, so I now this made me feel good. I took the cap off of the Proveri. I put it in front of uh, a heating vent, and the next morning when I woke up, my Proveri was completely functional. So I was very happy about that. And that's kind of what's been going on vaping wise. However, I do uh, want to real quickly say uh, thanks to our viewers. Uh, for being good, uh, being good sports about uh, the show we did last week, we had a good time with it, and uh, I was surprised. Poor Dino. I'm surprised. I was surprised. <laughs> I was surprised we didn't get more negative feedback off of it because it was really out of character for us. So very true. It it, it was, was, uh, was kind of cool. I was uh, surprised at how well it went. To be honest with you, uh, as far as you know, the fact that we actually tricked some people, I mean, it's pretty obvious at the beginning of that video. It said April first at the very beginning of the show, Absolutely. so it was like a reminder to Dino that it was. <laughs> well, you know, anyway. the funny thing is, is that if you're really going to fool somebody on April first, it's hard to do these days. You can't just do it. You you have to have multi layers. So I, I figured me getting turning into a drunk ass would uh, would make people. You and your cursing. <laughs> no, ass is not a word you can't use. It's also contextual. You can you can ride an ass, but you can't. Right. So we have to get the censorship board together and find out where we stand on that. Might have to. We might have to. Might have to. Might have to. So uh, that would. That's it. That's what's going on with me, and I'm. I'm. I'm a happy, happy vapor. I can't wait so for vape I, I spent the past week. I got a pro tank. Um, I bought two more evods. I am enjoying them immensely. Um, Kanger to me has just done a fantastic job. My biggest fear is that they may try and improve their products in the future, uh -oh. uh, which could potentially destroy these products. Because you know how they are with revisions. They're always revising things, and God knows what is reversion. Is reversion? Is revision 5 <laughs> going to be as good as revision 1? Who knows? So, so yeah, that's what I've been doing. Um, yeah, I, what else have I done this week? 
I sat down yesterday and recorded four or five uh, reviews in a row. That's prolific. That was, that was interesting. How many hours did you have to put into that? Because I know you cut them together and stuff like that, so you don't do like one take and get it over with. You. I'm I'm trying to uh, I'm trying. This has been taking a think. Making videos takes a lot of time, uh, more time than anybody realizes, right? So until you actually sit down and try and you know put together like a a well produced video you don't realize how much time you spend in post production how many takes you do um, so I'm trying to I sat down this week and I watched uh, a few of my videos from the past and I was trying to figure out what I liked and what I didn't like and um, you know I, I wanted to I wanted to be quicker I didn't I don't want to be 15 minutes so I, I hope if it works out for me and I like it that you guys will see um, the information that is pertinent uh, in a smaller package in the future so you're saying that less is, is more yes ripple that less is more ripple I know I never shut up and that's the problem I'm trying to be, <laughs> trying to be more I'm not talking anymore. I, I love it because when you're show lead, I can catch up on my sleep. It's <laughs> nice. All right, guys. So so that's that's it for us for the uh, what we've done over the past week. We're gonna move on. Uh, you guys remember the Enjoy? Now I don't know yeah. if like people are still talking about this thing or what. But I'll tell you what. I just bought five more of them. I always have one in my pocket as a backup. And I do really enjoy them. Um, and it was funny. I was at work. I got an email from my girlfriend, and, and it had this link in it. And uh, it's a Courtney Love video, uh, like a online-only video about the Enjoy. So we're going to show it to you right now. All right. And let me wind up and go. This is the Courtney Love video. That's not the Courtney Love video. This is the Courtney Love video. That doesn't look much like Courtney Love. Yeah, it doesn't. See, uh -huh. I, got a, I had a chance to make fun of Mike, and then I totally blew it by screwing up the setup, didn't I? I'm, I'm just... Your moment in the sun. Yeah, I was there. It was there, and then it was gone. But I think, I think, that, uh, I think that we will be able to resolve this issue currently. And off we go. We'll just, there we go. Excuse me. You know, you can't smoke in here. Relax. It's a fucking enjoy. Oh, make me over I'm all I want to be I walk and study So there we have it the and new the new enjoy with uh, Courtney Love I think So uh really my my initial reaction to this is why Courtney Love who cares about Courtney Love anymore yeah, she really has not been relevant in a long time. And even when she was relevant, we'll use some fancy air quotes, was she really that relevant for anything other than being Kurt Cobain's woman? I'm going to... Were they married? I don't remember if they were married. I don't think they were. No, they were married, I believe. Yeah, yeah, and and yeah they were. Maybe this is because of like the recent... like I don't know, people were talking. I don't know what the anniversary is of the death of... Kurt Cobain, but I think it was recent. So maybe it has something to do with that. But I'll tell you what, um, that girl has made one good album, and it was the one that Kurt Cobain wrote. <laughs> so. Well, I, and, and this is horrible because I'm going to get myself in all kinds of trouble. I can say things about vaping that will get people angry and stuff like that. Uh, I'm, I'm not a big Kurt Cobain fan, so she's not even notable for having been married to Kurt Cobain. 
yeah, I was. Uh, I mean, I wasn't. Uh, as far as my concern about Nirvana goes, you can pretty much get the unplugged album, and that was it. And uh, there's just there's some things about this commercial that just I get. They're trying to be cool and rebellious. They're kind of trying to do that. So there's their Super Bowl promo but ad. Wait, they kind isn't of she tried like? To, isn't she like middle aged? Is that rebellious? Well, she's got the strung out Coke look, I guess, going for her and. <laughs> And you that know, is a I, great look. That's a great look for uh, promoting e-cigs, idiots. Oh. <laughs> right, but then think about their Super Bowl spot, right, where they had uh, you know rugged, unshaven dude kind of puffing away, looking like he was having a good time. I just I, I don't understand who they've paid to do their marketing, but I think they've done a really poor job for what's otherwise uh, I think a noteworthy product. In the world of you know readily available convenience store electronic cigarettes, yeah, it's just it's unfortunate. Yeah, I I, I, mean, I, tr- I tried one over the weekend actually, and um, if I didn't have anything else, it would get me through. That's what I could say about it. Sure. Yeah, uh, but you'd be broke. They should stop marketing it. Oh, I can't believe I just said that. I'm in marketing, but they should stop marketing it with these stupid celebrities and stuff like that and they should start lowering the price because you get one person in the store they buy it they like it and then they're like well this is gonna cost me like sixteen dollars a day because they're completely lying on the pack and uh... you know then they're not gonna use it they're gonna seek out something else like blue or something i mean you know what at least blue you can buy the cartridges for somewhat uh... cheap you know somewhat cheap Simon english but uh... <laughs> Yeah, you know and you saying? know, recently too, th- this commercial's kind of gotten us some of the kind of press that we don't like. There was, uh, and I just threw the link in the chat. There was a, a Huffington Post article, kind of talking about how some of this stuff is getting marketed. And we spent some time on this, so we probably don't want to spend a ton here. But one of the big concerns was this between the Super Bowl ad, some of the blue ads that have run at really prominent times that we're getting back into the uh, potentially marketing to the under eighteen crowd. And of course, any time when someone who's under eighteen, even you know, is in the same county as a cigarette, it immediately is an assault on big tobacco for marketing to children. So, oh, yeah. this this ad, I think, is just misguided. I don't know what more we can really say about it. Speaking of big tobacco, I read this week that R.J. Reynolds is testing that View e-cig that they've been talking about for a while, and. Uh, that they are looking to have electronic cigarettes taxed at a lower rate than tobacco is taxed, but taxed nonetheless, right? Sure. So we, what we're seeing, I think, with that, I mean, once you get R.J. Reynolds in there, we've already got Lorillard, but Lorillard is you know, a small player compared to R.J. Reynolds. Um, you know, once all, you know, to Big Tobacco throws all their cards into this, and they don't mind being taxed, you know. Uh, you know, it, it, is it going to leave the little guy sort of out in the cold? You know, I don't think so because it's so easy. See, the heart and soul of an e-cigarette, because let's face it, the vaporizing technology has been more or less a done product the entire time we've been vaping. I mean, a cartomizer I have in the tank hasn't changed in design in what three years it's three years i think there were cartomizers around when i started that were exactly this design the heart and soul of the business is juice or liquid e-liquid that's the heart and soul of it and uh, well along i would say too with power application yeah and power application but both of those things are things that can be done in a bathroom i mean you could make juice So what you're saying is you vape in the bathroom a lot no no (laughs) no no no, no. You mix your yeah, liquid in the bathroom? Yeah. Well, I used to. I used do you to use your radio in the bathroom? My radio in the bathroom? Yes, I do. Yeah. Which you radio are you talking about? Are you, are you picking on me? We're, we're done. I'm we're picking. done with, uh, we're done with uh, April Fool's. You're picking on me. You're, you're a bad <laughs> man. Um, I think that the, I don't, I, 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 I don't think it's going to affect the little guy because the little guy can still produce juice and make a profit. What will hurt the little guy is regulations that the little guy can't meet. 
that's that's where the issue comes in. The, on an even playing field, I think someone like R.G. Reynolds could have their ass handed to them uh, by all the mom and pops. Because, let's face it, look at how vapors behave. I'm not talking about enthusiast vapors. I'm just talking about people who vape. I'm not talking about the people on ECF. I'm talking about when we go to a vaping store and we buy something from a retailer. I'll give you an example. There's two vaping stores and then I'll be done. I know I'm going long. Give me a bit. There's, there's, okay, there's three vaping stores that I've done a lot of business with between Chicago and, and Detroit. Okay? I like to go in and buy my cardamizers or, or some of the juices that they have and that kind of stuff by going in and I hardly buy any e-cig supplies online at this point. So these mom and pops that are converting over to brick and mortar businesses uh, or are making brick and mortar part of their business I think can absolutely compete with RJ Reynolds. And they have the power to say no to RJ Reynolds when RJ Reynolds wants to position their products in the in the vapor shop and that's my thought on it. Yeah but I don't think it's so much the Look, I, we've got something called Wawa near me, right? And that's where everybody goes. They get their cigarettes, they get their gas, they get their snacks, you know, pretzels, things like that. Pretzels. And, and once, you know, the, the half of that rack of cigarettes is electronic cigarettes from Big Tobacco, I don't think that people are going to be like, oh, it, you know, the mom and pop shops will turn into the little smoke shop, right? And there's a smoke shop right down the street from me, like Indian smoke shop or something like that. And every time we drive by, like either me or Jennifer says, I can't believe nobody's there. Nobody's ever in the parking lot. This big store, big parking lot. Nobody is there, ever. I don't know how they're in business, you know? And like even walking in like the mall and walking past the smoke store, you know, when I go in there, I'm one of maybe two people in there. So, you know, I think that once this is every uh, big tobacco company has multiple brands, the way they have multiple, multiple brands of cigarettes that are marketed differently, um, I, think that, I think we're going to have a problem. And I think that everybody's fighting that tax, right? But they're promoting that. They want that tax, right? So eventually we'll end up with a tax. So we've got, we've got two entities battling our little grassroots thing that we've got going now. We've got the pharmaceutical companies, they don't want e-cigs because they want to sell us Chantex. And then we got Big Tobacco saying, I can make money off of this because you're not smoking anymore. So we're going to go in and we're going to say, tax us. Go ahead, tax us. Just not as bad as you did on cigarettes because it's not as bad. And the government's going to say, yeah, sure, because we trust you more than we trust, well, you know, the taxation little issue isn't the taxation issue separate from the overall issue of the industry is healthy? No, that they they're what they're rallying for is taxes on e-cigs. So, so once they get once they have, you know, some kind of FDA regulation, once they have some sort of tax to to uh, you know, make the government happy, uh, then they're going to release this e-cig and you know, it's going to be it's going to be like uh, you know another part of the tobacco industry. It's going to be smoke cigarettes, but if you don't want to do that, use this e-cig. Yeah, well, and they're uh, both from us. So, and I, so I, they're I, just moving money from one place to the other. I hear you, but I really disagree. And here's the reason: this, this, the the vapor shops that I've been to, and I've been to them all around the country, have a steady stream of people coming through uh, the doorway. Uh, I, I've, I saw one shop where they had a, a line 10 deep for over three hours. Um, and I don't know that Wawa having this magic e-cig is going to convert those customers. They, because the business is already there. It's not As long as these vapor shops still take care of their customers, are they going to lose their customers to a product from R.J. Reynolds? No, yeah, but I'm talking about the product. Exactly. Quite the product, yeah. Coming in, man, new people are coming in daily, 
and and where are they coming in the same place that we came in which is with these little stick batteries that look like cigarettes that's why the enjoy king is right. so fantastic right. it feels like a cigarette right, right. but i so, think i think for every person that you're going to find who picks up an enjoy or the view or whatever it might be at their local gas station you're going to find three or four more who feel more comfortable going to a vape shop where somebody's going to walk them through it it's a bit more mysterious um I think, you know, people still value that kind of interaction and not dealing with some pimply faced 15 year old kid at a cash register. You know what I mean? Right. But we also don't even know the marketing dynamics of this yet. There is, there is no real research on customer preference because the only market that's out there is being supplied with non big tobacco products. So the only thing that we can. Blue! Blue is the biggest e cig in the country. Blue is a Chinese e-cig import. I, and it doesn't matter. It's owned by Lourlard. I understand that, but it's a still a, go, it's I still it, a, it's still a stick battery. It it can still be a stick battery, but there are people out there that use just that, and there's more people that use just that I, and use I, these devices. I agree. I, I absolutely agree, but saying that uh, a company like R.J. Reynolds is going to destroy the vapor business through by advocating for taxation and because they're coming in with a product that's going to be marketed in places where everybody can get it, would you can't say that because the closest paradigm that you have to that is, did cigarettes kill tobacconists? And they didn't, at least uh, in Detroit, and Chicago, and even in my hometown of Jackson, Michigan. They, there is, their tobacconists are doing bang up business because people want high end tobacco products. So people are always going to want high end vapor products, I would think. I mean, when I smoked a pipe, I smoked a meerschaum pipe, and that was an expensive. I don't know when pipe. I when I smoked when I smoked cigarettes, I smoked off the shelf Marlboros. You know, I mean, and every now and again, I went in and I bought a specialty pack of, of cigarettes from, you know, uh, you know, a tobacco store or something like that, like some expensive pack or something. Or even when Camel put out those special flavored, you know, cigarettes that were supposed sure. to be, you know, one of them was for drinking and you know, whatever. You know, I went out and I bought a couple of those, and I and I only smoked one here and there because I didn't want to use the whole pack. And I know this is a different thing. But nonetheless, you have to, to think that once every convenience store, every place where you can buy a cigarette has an electronic cigarette product from Big Tobacco in it, that people are going to start using those because they're easier to find. There are no vaping shops around me. There may be vaping shops, shops near you, but you know, I, I, I have to say that we're, we're fighting this tax. And why are we fighting the tax? Because we... If the if ta if being taxed is not going to kill our industry, then why do we spend so much time rallying against the tax, right? Well, because we don't want to be taxed. I mean, we're Americans. We don't want to. Nobody be taxed. wants to pay taxes. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, and I don't want to have to like offshore my dollars for vaping stuff. You know, um, get it drop shipped out of the Antilly Islands or something. Um, yeah, I mean, I see your point. I mean, we're never gonna, we're not gonna really know. And I wanted to point out, somebody said in chat, are we taking calls? We will definitely take calls tonight. We just, we wanted to, we wanted to chew this up the three of us, and then we'll, we'll, we'll let people in. It, Mike's the boss tonight, so. Uh, yeah. But I, we're I, I'm not sure that we can tell where it's going because, you know, usually when you make a prediction, you can go, well, this thing over here, this situation was like this. So because I've seen this before, I can say that it's likely that this thing will do what that thing did. But we didn't we didn't have we don't have a real example of big tobacco coming in with mass produced cigarettes and putting out a putting out a business a mom and pop industry. They there may have been, I mean I I don't know 100 years ago did people get their tobacco products at a tobacconist and only at a tobacconist? But that was a fairly slow process, if it if it did the transition from a tobacconist to because the tobacconist used to be held with some esteem, like you know. Yeah, but nowadays things move at a yeah. pace that's much faster than before. Oh, I I agree. So what you got five years, ten years, fifteen years, maybe. But uh, I I'm I'm I, I'm I'm not necessarily convinced. But I'm not saying you're wrong. 
Yeah, I mean, I, but I'm I, against I, taxation. I think I think that the important thing is is that now we're looking at we need to think of big tobacco as also a threat. So we've got pharmaceuticals now. Now sometimes people say, "Oh, big tobacco, big tobacco." Big tobacco has not been a threat, right? It is going to be a threat now, but pharmaceutical companies have been the threat. So I think it'll be interesting to see how it turns out. Um, but I do believe, I, I do believe that the industry is going to the mom and pop industry. The industry that we know it now is definitely going to change when all those big tobacco companies come in. Now, on that point, um, there's some good news, Yay. right? Silver lining. So while, while we should worry about big tobacco, in my opinion, now uh, the FDA has come out in the past week and said that. Hey, maybe we're gonna chill out. We'll relax the the whole talk of, um, you know, a limited amount of time that you can use nicotine replacement therapy. I think that's a big win for us. Basil, what do you think? Yeah, no, it is because one of the biggest I think myths that gets propagated is that people are using electronic cigarettes to get more nicotine in, which it does two things. It keeps that incredibly negative stigma around nicotine. And it, it's also just not true. I mean, people aren't grabbing electronic cigarettes and, you know, puffing on one of those and a cigarette at the same time to try and double or triple their intake to get some sort of magic sense of euphoria. I mean, that's just not what's happening. So having some actual kind of numbers and, you know, credible research behind it, I think, is important. Yeah, Mr. And, uh, but I think it could. I think it could backfire um, because the FDA could easily say, "Well, why would you want to use uh, e-cigarettes for an indeterminate period of time when we're allowing you to use NRTs and those are pharmaceuticals and approved?" I mean, it 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 could go to our disadvantage. Well, I, mean, I think the next step here is that no. you have to take uh, the same, oh, potentially even the same fourteen hundred people, but you've got to look at. And I just don't understand uh, how the FDA ignores success ratios of traditional pharmaceutical grade NRTs. I mean, that's the big missing link here, right? How do you link those 1,400 people who have either significantly cut down on their, well, not completely 1,400, but, uh, you know, the 76% of the, the surveyed uh, people. You, wait, you're, you're talking about the, uh, you're talking about the Reuters article where oh, yeah, there was a, uh, I skipped over that. I'm a horrible show lead. Oh, I thought that's where we went. No, no. Uh, where, we were talking where about. I? I don't know. What's that? I'm trying to figure out where. Yeah. I'm at. So, so, so the the thing that Basil's talking about is the fact that uh, you know there was a there was a survey online and. There was, I don't know, what was what were the stats again, Basil? Can yeah, you take so that? It was a survey run in the UK, and uh, they surveyed 1,400 people who um, were electronic cigarette users. Predominantly, it was, you know, it was a UK survey, so it was UK-facing. It was just an internet survey um, to try and figure out why people were using electronic cigarettes and if they were using them potentially to up their nicotine intake, like some of the antis really like to propagate that one. And what they found is that 76% of the people said they looked to electronic cigarettes either as a, a way to cut back on the amount they were smoking or work around smoking bans or potentially to, you know, use that as a bridge to quit smoking altogether. Which, and that's where we really get into kind of dispelling the dual use myth, right? Where people are using traditional tobacco in conjunction with electronic cigarettes to reach some sort of unsafe level of nicotine ingestion. Well, I mean, nicotine well, is pretty self-regulating. I mean, if you if you go over your tolerance for nicotine intake, you vomit. Ugh, I I yeah, know. You do. I know. Uh, or you get dizzy. Oh you get, yeah. You get dizzy Notches. and then you vomit. Oh yeah. I because uh, I, we've talked about this before, but real quick, tobacco addiction is a cross addiction. There's other chemicals in the smoke that's addictive. So when I switch to vaping. I was vaping a whole lot more than I was smoking because I wasn't getting the other chemicals, and I I ended up over nicking myself and vomiting about two weeks in. Uh, but I wasn't in any danger. I remember the first time I over nicked. Fun. I was I was yeah. laying on the bed because I didn't feel good, so I laid on the bed 
and I'm facing up, and the whole room is spinning. Yeah, and it sounds a lot like, like my first full cigarette experience. I almost yeah. fell out of a hayloft. Yeah. My first full cigarette experience was not like this, but it was like it was on this edge of this is pretty cool, and oh, I feel so sick. <laughs> I want this to end. You know, like. So anyway, I laid there until the room stopped spinning, and I felt better. And it's something that only lasts for a small period of time uh, until that nicotine kind of works through your system, I guess. Um, but, you know, nonetheless, um, I don't know where I'm going with this. <laughs> oh, boy. Well, we, we did have somebody try to call in earlier. Uh, are, are we at a point, Mike, where we can open phone lines, or do you want to go through the rest of the I think I think that we're ready for a bio break, and then we okay. will take calls in two minutes. Okay, guys, hit the bio break and take care of what needs to be taken care of. We'll be back in a minute. Because I know I did. I was making it. Luke, Tim, apologies yeah, in clear. advance. This just had to be done. All right? So let's start by turning up the bass line a bit. Oh, no. Someone said CEO, and I really think, oh, no. Tim and Luke, it's time for another drink. Oh, no. Someone said CEO, and I really think, oh, no. You guys won't be getting off easy, eh? Sitting here along with my RTA Just relaxing at the end of a stressful day Got my mini cube with a fully charged source Got a big bottle of juice and a needle of course Trying to catch up, see what I've missed Wondering if some new PV's been dissed Switch on G Plus to see who's online And my notifications come to over a thousand lines But oh, no Someone said CEO and I really think oh, no Tim and Luke, it's time for another drink, oh, no, someone said CEO, and I really think, oh, no, drink up guys, there's a lot more to come, going through my list and I see something nice, UKV hangout, a place for jokes and advice, get out my headset, switch on the mic, even in all, think I found something that I might like, join in Dell, Lee, Paula and Andrew, did I forgot to mention, Tar Hill too, and a special guest from the US of A, Renee, she's so sweet, what more can I say? Oh, no, someone said CEO, and I really think, oh, no, Tim and Luke, it's time for another drink, oh, no, someone said CEO, and I really think, oh, no, just a few more now, yeah, hang in there. Special event tonight, the drinking game It's not like the others, nowhere near the same Whenever someone says CEO Luke and Tim both gotta have another go A shot for each time, the letters get said So by this time they both got spinning heads Such a simple thing with no real rules A word of warning though, someone really drools Oh, no, it's the last time I'm gonna say CEO What's up, guys? So, uh, I think what we want to do now is uh, we talked about a couple subjects. We got a little bit more that we're going to talk about a little bit later, but we want to hear from you guys. So, anybody who wants to call, let's get that number up on the screen and post that number in the chat. Uh, one thing while we're waiting that I do want to uh, uh, address is somebody was saying that there are uh, idiots out there that smoke one on the patch. Uh, actually, the, the FDA thing said, uh, at least I believe it said somewhere in there, that um, if people wanted to use two forms of nicotine replacement, um, that they'll be free to do so. So, or it, or it won't be discouraged or something like that. So, I mean, uh, I, I don't think that it's a good idea, but it is what it is. Cause do we have any calls? I will. <laughs> hey, how you guys doing? This is Robert. How you doing, Mike, from yesterday? What's up, Robert? Hey, man. Wow. I'm, I, 
I, I guess I'm just naive, man. Um, I, I, you know, with the, uh, you mentioned the ad, for instance, uh, the Joy ad. I mean, yeah. I was looking at it as, well, you know what? They're getting the e-cig thing out there. I mean, I think I said this before, you know, because I read some of the forums and hear what some of the vapors got to say. And uh, really, sometimes the vaping community reminds me of the religious right. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, it's like, you know, uh, it's going to give the industry a bad name, and it, it, it's like, uh, uh, some people want to keep smoking cigarettes, you know? I mean, all of a sudden, people smoke cigarettes. I hear jokes about them and this, and uh, I used to smoke. I just chose to switch to vaping. But I would still uphold a person's right to smoke if they want to smoke cigarettes. That's okay, I don't, you know? I don't, think that, I don't think that we were saying... You know, that if you don't want to, or if you, you know, I don't think anybody ever said, you know, like, oh, you're an idiot if you smoke or anything like that. I'd say if you want to smoke, go ahead and smoke. That's none of my business, you know. But, you know, as as far as e-cigs go, and, you know, the industry is in a turbulent time right now. And, uh, you know, we have to pay attention to our image. And is Ka what's Kaz doing? I mean, you know, people who who, who uh, use e-cigs are they're just people, you know. And what I mean is, they they uh, have the same moral deficiency. They have the same issues um, that that they basically uh, vaping does not a better person make. I, I don't think. No. I, I think. I think where we get into the people who are maybe bashing smokers is, <laughs> it's really hard in modern society to pick up your very first cigarette and plead ignorance to the fact that it literally will shorten your life, will kill you, and there's a pretty good chance that sustained smoking over time, right? Smoking, you know, fair amounts regularly, is going to lead to, you know, some pretty significant health issues down the road. And I think that's where there's almost an elitist attitude that kind of comes in. And I, and I get that, the, the correlation you're making uh, with, you know, kind of the religious right. And I think that's what it's about. It's about people, you know, forgetting that, hey, we used to be just like that. And now because we've changed, we expect everyone else to change with us. Exactly. And the thing about the, even with the health issue, I mean, uh, I work out daily, but if I didn't vape, I would be healthier. You know, I mean, it's not directly said, but I really think that it's indirectly stated sometimes that there's uh, vaping doesn't affect your health. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. Anything other than we're inhaling air affects your health in some kind of way. Well, you know, I don't that, think that. Right. I, 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 I think that most of us know that. I think that you'd have I to mean, be silly to think that vaping is, you know, somehow equal to not vaping. Well, I you mean, know? Right. Reduce, I, I you think that the best stance for us to take is vaping is not as bad as cigarettes. We can stand on that with authority. Yeah. But anything else... Uh, I just think we kind of, it's kind of oversteps the bounds a little bit. It's a better alternative to smoking cigarettes. To stand there, because to go any further than that, I, I think we get ourselves, we could get ourselves into a pickle. Because there haven't been enough, there haven't been any really long-term studies of the effects of vaping, you know, over a, a, a 15 or 20 year period. No, not yet. You know, for all we know, you know, we'll uh, become flesh-eating zombies. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm, I'm planning on exciting. that for, like, June. Well, on, on that note... <laughs>
<laughs> uh, yeah, the other thing I wanted to say was area code 308. We're more than happy to take your call. Uh, you just need to call in and wait until we're done with the caller that we have. Um, oh, Sense. One more thing for Sense and I'm done. Oh. Uh, yep. I finally got that rebuildable thing right. I told Mike yesterday. And now I understand. <laughs> uh, <laughs> All right. Well, good for you, there Robert. You go. Thanks, thanks for calling in, bro. And uh, I'll see you Hi, over the guys. weekend. And Hi, Robert. Area, Thanks for calling. Area code 308 keeps calling in and hanging up, so I don't know what that's about. Maybe they're having problems with their phone. Um, so I don't have an additional caller. We can move on down the list, and I'll add calls in as we go. All right. Uh, what do we got next? Uh, oh, cardamizers. I don't know if anybody read about this, but um, I read about it today. I believe it came out a, a couple days ago. It was um, a sort of a study that was done on cardamizers and the particles that are in cardamizers that uh, you know you you may be inhaling. And uh, I think that the the gist of it was that in the cardamizers um, there is some sort of particle in the filler, there's some sort of uh, group of medical or medical metal particles that you could be yep. inhaling when you're uh, taking a puff off of a uh, cardamizer. And, um, you know, so basically now we're calling out cardamizers as being bad. Uh, you know, one thing that needs to be noted about that is that the person who... Uh, kind of was part of the study is an anti. Uh, they are completely against yeah. e-cigarettes. They're like a big anti-tobacco person. So again, this brings me to, I'm going to wrap it up. I know I'm, I'm long-winded. Um, again, that brings us to people who have an agenda shouldn't be involved in these studies, in my opinion. Well, Guys. how do you how do you avoid that though? I mean, we've had this conversation before. How do you avoid? I mean, the interested parties are obviously the people who are pro vaping and the people who are anti anti vaping. I would think the there's studies, not a lot of people who are neutral. Yeah, that's the I, I would think the studies would be done by one side or the other side, and then maybe somebody neutral would validate which ones have better rocket sauce. You know. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I think eventually it's going to become something that's of interest to the scientific community beyond uh, people who have an agenda. I would hope so. I think so. one of the most interesting things about that, and I put the links into the chat, um, are the, the, when they start getting into the dissections, and they've done a really good job of dismantling a cardamizer in pieces. Yeah. Well, yeah you, know what, you, know what's, you know what's interesting is that I had a talk with somebody who's, um, well, I'm not, not going to name him, but I had a talk with somebody who's, you know, sort of in the know with this stuff. And, um, you know, he, uh, last time I talked to him was a couple months ago, and he basically said, you know, or I said to him that every now and again, like, I get a scratchy throat if I'm using, like, a cardamizer or something with silica. And, um, you know, this is a person who cleans out his cardamizers before he even uses them. And he noticed because he did like a little experiment that if he took a brand new one out of the uh, the box and vaped it, he got a little bit of that scratchy throat I was talking about. But if he cleaned them before he ever used them, he didn't get that scratchy throat. And if he got that scratchy throat on a brand new one out of the box, after some e-liquid went through it, the scratchy throat thing went away. Uh, so I think that this raises some issues, I think, on... Uh, like, is the filler in a cardamizer cleaned? Uh, yeah. Is the wire used cleaned? Mm -hmm. You know, uh, how, how, you know, what are the solder joints? You know, what are you using in the solder? How well is it soldered? Um, I, I think that it brings some of those, those issues to light. Um, you, you can do a study that says, hey, this is yeah. horrible. But, you know, how about looking at how they're manufactured in China... Uh, and and seeing how we might be able to manufacture them differently, or or add some more processes to the line in order to avoid the possibility of these little particles being inhaled. Yeah, guys. Well, what do you think? I 
I, I can't argue with it. I mean, what you're talking about is it's turning up the volume on quality control, and that's a, a really important thing that needs to happen in this industry. Uh, because we've all gotten crappy products. How many times have you gotten a pack of cartomizers and had uh, four of them be bad? I mean, I, I, it's on more than three hands that I've had that frustration. Um, and as a cartomizer user now, it's it's of uh, it's of concern, you know. Uh, and remember, now this was brought up on ECF years ago when somebody dismantled the cartomizer and showed that the poly the the fiber had been scorched and burned, and uh, the little uh, fiber diaper that was in there had had been burned through on some cartomizers that had been used for a very long time. And yeah, but that, you know that still happens to me, Kaz. Oh yeah, no, I agree. It hasn't changed. I, I'm just saying, though, the argument back then was, you're talking about scorching that much material over a period of the week or two that you use the cartomizer, compared to burning tobacco, and that's always got to yeah, be the, that's always got to be the benchmark, I think, because really it's tobacco when, harm reduction, not tobacco harm elimination. When you frame it like that, it's funny because I used to take apart cartomizers in my videos. And be like, it's burnt! Rah! Right? But when you frame it like that, it's like, yeah, well, I mean, well, big deal. These things aren't supposed to be meant, or these things aren't supposed to be used as long as we use them anyway. Right. Yeah, and, I mean, and that's, uh, you know, and the, the voltages that are being applied in some applications as well. And that's yeah. just it, you know, short of completely changing where and or how quality control is implemented in the manufacturing process, uh, you know, that's going to change price significantly for cartomizers if they're done anywhere else in the world just about. But is that going to change them necessarily for the better in the way we think about cartomizers now? It could. I. It, it could, sure. But by I, that same I mean, token, it, it, right? It, if you guys you know, have seen the video with Phil and uh, Zen, yeah. Zen claims to have found the missing link in crappy cartomizers and has designed his new cardo tank for the Zenesis 2 system to eliminate that entirely. So, uh, you, you know, we don't know. I think there's still huh? some, some work to be done out there. I mean, I'll tell you what. I tried it at VapeFest, uh, and it was a blind test. And, you know, he handed it to me and said, don't look at it, just take a vape. I took a vape and I said, oh, yeah, I said, you know, it's good. And he said, that's a cartomizer. And I said, that's a cartomizer? I thought it was a Genesis. Um, now, I'm saying that on first impression uh, with somebody else's liquid that I don't know what it, his liquid tastes like. I know what my e-liquid tastes like in multiple devices. I use it every day in lots of devices. And, and that's going to be the benchmark for me. How does it taste with my e-liquid? Does it taste like a cardamizer? I know what a cardamizer tastes like with my e-liquid. So I think, that, uh, I think that everything he explained everything to me, and it, and it was interesting. And you know, I only took one puff off of it because um, I don't like to take puffs off other people's devices. Well, that's, that's but, enough for a review, right? <laughs> and, and you know and we're getting I mean we're getting sidetracked in, in a way here too yeah well I mean it's even if these people are aunties I, I mean or ants aunties ants the fact that somebody looked at the issue is good because now there's some data okay yeah now whether that data is good data or bad data or the data needs to be confirmed and someone in chat was doing a countdown to when I said peer review Hi, peer review. Uh, when when something gets done and it becomes peer reviewed, so that you you have conclusions that can be verified. Um, because as vapors, I mean, let's you know, let's let's face it. The three of us and our viewers are the same people. We're just vapors. We got off of cigarettes. We enjoy doing this and whatever. We can't. I, I mean, with some study and stuff, we can draw some conclusions. But we're not the people to be peer reviewing this. So we can't come up with the conclusions for it. Uh, we can publicize them if they come up, but uh, it, I, I read that I read that article in depth, and one of the things that I saw in another article, and boy, I wish I could uh, pinpoint the article. Now I was so busy 
setting up for the show, but the point that they made is there were something like 8,300 particulates in a mouthful of c cigarette smoke, or that was the base number, and the e-cigarette was like 50 or 100 or something like that. So yeah, those numbers like, sound pretty pretty close yeah, to what I read. 80, so 83 times the amount of particular matter. matter. So, yeah, I mean, well... I, you know, I'm not a I'm not a, a PhD or anything, but uh, 83 times seems like a lot to me. That's like eight orders of magnitude. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think that the other the other uh, fact here is, you know, we were talking about this burning cardamizer, and they they saw that some cardamizers looked like they were used before they were even opened. Now, obviously, that's probably testing at the factory. Um, but, you know, there are other types of cardamizers that just did not catch on, like those bottom horizontal coil cardamizers. You know, I, mm -hmm. wonder, I wonder if anything's different with those. Um, well, those, you know, were hyped, just interesting. those were hyped really hard by a lot of people. On like, it's burn proof, yeah. Yeah, like on, on an ECF, and I, I still think there's people that like them. Um, uh, they, I never had one burn. But the thing is, is that we go through that in the vaping enthusiast community, those of us who are the pipe smokers of tobacco users, uh, the, the, which is what we kind of are, we get something new every three weeks. I mean, there's something new and revolutionary in the market every three weeks. You know, I, I remember people claiming that the go-go the was the, uh, it's the first horizontal coil bottom-fed cartomizer, and, and it wasn't the first bottom fed horizontal coil was the uh, the Joytech uh, 510 and, and Joytech Ego cartomizers. I thought that the Bluge came out first. Um, I don't know. We'd have to look into it and, and, and find out. And from, from what I remember about it, it was the Joytech, but there was still something before that. So you get a lot of hype because everybody's enthused. Yeah, I get that. I get that way too. I mean, there there are times like I like this tank that I got here. I way overpaid for it. It was like twenty two dollars. It's got like the locking ring on the bottom, and Ooh. I, I I love this thing because you can't pull it off. You can grab it by the cardo and carry it around, and and I get all enthused about it. And I tell people about it when I go to vape meets and oh, it's cool, it's great. That's the new Mearsham pipe. We all do that. So there's always hype surrounding this stuff. Um, and st I, I really got off track there. And, uh, you know, we, we should have just drank this week, too, right? <laughs> but I, I, see your, I, see your, I see your point. I think that the drinking, uh, I think maybe there were some people that actually thought that there was going to be no show this week. <laughs> it could be. It could be. A victim they still should have asked like, us oh. to cut a promo spot for us for the beginning of the show. Really mess with people. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I, I think that these are all issues that those of us who are vaping proponents need to be concerned about, but I still don't see anything that says this is worse than a cigarette. Uh, when I look at that data, I say eight orders of magnitude less dangerous than a cigarette. Right. You know. And uh, Ripple just brought up the tear and spin. You know, I mean, <laughs> there's... Wow, that I haven't goes, heard of that in a long time. That goes time. back. <laughs> wow. That goes back. That's back in the ancient days. God, it's like back when oh, I remember I remember starting out vaping in the fluval that I was buying oh, God, and I was going to fish stores. I found myself back at fish stores when when uh Scuba Dan was talking about those filters that you could shave down into wicks. Uh, yeah, it was a throwback. That's for that's a whole other subject for another. Uh, yeah, another time we could do a whole show just on the garbage, the crazy stuff that we did. Yeah, we could, we should do that. We should get a show together with that with some of our old videos showing all the craziest things that we had to do in order to get stuff working. That would be an interesting show. Oh, I have a whole like five minutes of the beginning of one of my videos where I'm like, I bought these. You know, tea bags and made wicks out of them, and that didn't work. And I bought this fluval, and then I bought this filler and that filler, and it didn't work. And this all sucks. <laughs> yeah, I've got. I've actually got. Still some swear funny... about the straw method if you're using a cartridge. Yeah. What's that? I, yeah, I agree with you there. Straw method. Yeah, 
I, I've got videos where I, because I, I all I do my videos in one take, one full thing. I don't splice anything together ever, and uh, I've got videos okay, where Mr. I got. I don't splice anything because I'm perfect. <laughs> no, it's not that. My videos are pretty rough. I, I just I just prefer to do them that way. But I, I, I got just to the end on a bunch of them. I still got the videos. I watch them every now for a laugh. And I totally screw it up. Just completely go off the edge. I've got a couple where I'm just like swearing and throwing stuff in front of the camera. Because, you know, you're on like take six and it's like I want to go to sleep. You know. So if we're looking for something funny, it makes me look like more of a dork. We got it. <laughs> Well, all right, guys. So, do we have any more people who want to call in and talk about any of these subjects? If not, then I think that we're, uh, you know, we blasted through a whole bunch of stuff today. I think it had a good flow. And, uh, you know, I think we might just end it early if we don't have anybody who wants to call in and talk a little bit more. Last chance for calls, guys. Get in here, 847-423-8581 if you have anything to say. And we'll sit here silently and massage our inner thighs while we're waiting. <laughs> Let's not do that at all. That's creepy. <laughs> oh gosh, you weirdo! Oh, I just had to go. I had to flash back to last week. I and speaking of last week, I have to tell you that I always love doing that show, but I really, really enjoyed that. I we just uh, that was that was really that was a lot of fun. It was alright. The best part was was Dino messaging me on Skype. Like, what is going on? <laughs> What's wrong with Kaz? What's wrong? Why did you leave? <laughs> and then apparently Basil was messaging him, like, I'm done. I'm leaving. I'm off the show. And so then Dino's messaging me, like, I talked to Basil, and Basil's going to leave too. <laughs> what happened? <laughs> he, yeah, was to call in. Yeah. he was supposed to call in. He was supposed to call in and say what mods he would do to the... Uh, you know, whatever that thing was that we made fun of Enhaler with. I hope that Drew isn't mad about that. He was supposed to call in too, wasn't he? He never he, did. He was. He was. He was going to call in, and uh, I asked him to call in. He he might be mad at me. Um, <laughs> I, Oops. I, he he gave me the radio spots, his real radio spots, and he said, "You're not going to spoof me, are you?" And I said, "I'm not going to mess with your radio spots." And I didn't. I just kind of put his logo over somebody else's funny radio spot. Um, and Ripple is saying that we should be uh, plugging Vape Bash. We talked about Vape Bash at the top of the show, but I will plug it again. Vape Bash, check it out. Chicago next weekend. If you're in or around Chicago, be here. That'll make Ripple happy, and he won't slap me when he sees me. And speaking of Vape Bash or Vape Things, um, when is VaporCon? Do we have any information on VaporCon? Is it going to be in the same area? Does anybody know this? Uh, because if they haven't announced is... anything yet. They said that yeah. they it will not be at the exact same venue. It will probably be around the same time period, and they want to keep it out there. You know, in, in Virginia, kind of in that area is the hope. Well, if they're nice. in Virginia, are you guys are you guys going to go? Because I was thinking I would go. I had said that I had said that I that I wasn't going to go because I was gonna, wasn't going to do the eleven hour drive again. I might not want to do it, um, but I think I think that's going to happen. I think I'm going to end up going. I had such a good time last time, so I'll probably end up pointing up. Good because I'm not going. If at least you know, if you guys don't go, <laughs> well, since you guys aren't going to be a vape bash, I'm not going to vape bash either. There you go. Really? No, no, I'm going. I, I'm, I'm. It's, it's, it's ten minutes from, from, my place in Chicago. It's ten minutes. You know what I want you to do? I want you to like text message me pictures of any new devices that are there. And uh, if there's anything I want, I want you to pick it up for me, mm -hmm. and I will pay you back via PayPal immediately. Okay. Well, I'll keep in touch, man. <laughs> it'll, All right, it'll guys. Be, it'll be uh, fine. Let's roll. I, I think that uh, we had a great show. Again, I always have fun with these two guys Monday nights. Um, we have a whole bunch of networks out there who uh, have partnered with us and are doing replays or are uh, streaming us live. I would yeah. like to thank them 
all of them. And um, we will see you guys next Monday. And we are out. Apollo 11, this is Houston. Uh, slightly less than one minute to ignition, and everything is go. Right here.